Hello. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed and honor be unto God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless his name. We honor his name. We give him glory. We give God honor. Happy Saturday, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalom. Happy Sabbath um, day to you. Happy Sabbath. We just bless the name of the Lord and give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. I'm here today. So Shabbat Shalom, man of God. Shabbat Shalom. I might blow my show for today. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm giving away something today. I'm giving I'm giving away something today that is so priceless. I want to I want to give it away for free. I'd paid for it. Over and over I pay for it, but I want to give it away for free today. Um I was just here just worshiping the Lord and talking to God and just going through so much notes, so much so many at his side in the next room. So many notes, so many sermons. And so many experiences that I have walked through this life with. And um, wanted us to do my, to bury my Haman today. And I saw someone else was doing it all the way from Jamaica, which is such a big confirmation. Because she and I didn't talk about it, and she, I was doing it, she was doing it all the way in, from in Jamaica. She was doing it. She was doing it from all the way in Jamaica and I said, Lord, the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving over this entire atmosphere. The Holy Spirit is just moving. There's a wave of the Holy Spirit that is moving. It is moving mightily like we are about to have a revival like a revival is about to break out or something a revival or something is going on in the in the realm of the spirit and in the natural it's like a breakout god bless you happy sabbath shabbat shalom happy sabbath to you there is a revival that is going on there is a breakout of god outpouring of his spirit that is going on right now in the in and out the body of Christ. I was having a little hustle bustle here, so I don't know if I can blow the show for as how um I supposed to blow it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. There's a revival that is going on right now. <laughs> There is a revival that is going on right now. There's a breakout of the whole outpouring spirit of the Holy Ghost and the body of Christ and us Christian. Even the sinner now getting blessing. The sinners are getting even more blessed than the true, true child of God. The true men and women of God that are not selling the gospel. Um, the devil is getting blessed right now. Satan's children are getting blessed right now. And we have, to, we have to take that back. So there is something that is in the atmosphere. That is, there is something that is going on that we need, to, we need to talk about it. And we need to be set free today. 
My platform is a raw safe haven house of prayer ministry, and um, it's a, the undiluted word of God. I'm not going to compromise the word, and um, I'm not going to write a, a story to tell you. However, if the Lord lays something on my heart that I wrote to read, I will do that. And I will try to break the Bible to you as how I can, how I experience it. And you break it, read it the way in which you understand to do it. But there is a revival that is going on right now. There is a revival that is going on in and out the body of Christ. And... Um, there is so much for us to do. There is so much for us to do, but we are not getting from our comfort zone to do it. And one of the one of the strong men that is holding us, one of the strong men is holding us. There are several different strong men that are holding us bound, and we need to we need to set ourselves free. Hallelujah! We need to set ourselves free. And how we can do that is, uh, is forgive. Forgive ourselves and forgive each other. So there is, there is a bad, real bad parasite that is on loose. Not even the serpent. Worms, worms. We are talking about maggots. We're talking about worms right now. That, that loose. That is all over. And you don't want worm to eat you while you're alive. Hallelujah. Because um, the worm, the parasite, it, um, it polluted and it cleansed. If, if you can understand that. And I will get into that another day. But I want to deal with forgiveness today. I want to deal with forgiveness and f what forgiveness can bring you. And what... And forgiveness can also bring you the benefit that you get when you forgive. That's what I need to talk about. So I'm giving that away for free today because I realize that I have paid for it both, both with my physical and spiritual being. And um, we need to get rid of it. So right now I'm going to just engage with prayer. Right now I'm pray for you and bless you for joining me. So Father, right now we cover the here way and your people with the blood of Jesus. We barricade our life with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now upon this broadcast, upon the life of your children, upon my life, upon my children's life, upon their children's life, upon their marriage, upon their future marriage. We just plead the blood of Jesus. We ask the angel of the Lord to encamp and surround us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just plead the blood of Jesus and try to set ourselves free today in the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord God Almighty will get the glory, you will get the honor, and you will get the praise. Because a lot of us, if you notice, I have several different Bibles. I like to read different, different Bibles. And, um, you know, I'm not a pro. I'm not in the pro thing and all of that stuff. Because I'm just going to give it to you real and keep it real. But wait, wait until you see me tomorrow. That's when I go serve my God. When I go dance, you see me tomorrow. But back on this year, we have to learn how to forgive. That's one of the big, 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 big problem that we are having. Walking in unforgiveness. So, I want to give away something for free today. This. Hallelujah. January, February, March, 2010, 2010, I went to this place, I went to this place in 2010, 
I'm not advertising for anyone and I don't have the right to do that but I don't know if you can see this it say R RTF restoring foundation ministry I was so I'm going to be reading from papers today and God bless you you have my last name Miss Walker God bless you so I'm going to give away this for free today and when I tell you I'm going to give it away for free I went there in 2010 I don't know if you can see it and um, I paid um, I paid $1,700 if you can see a 35 a 35 twice I paid $1,700 for one model models for just to walk through forgiveness I paid seventeen hundred seventeen hundred and thirty five dollars for it and you see I had was to I had was to pay before I leave I had was to pay them before they would even check me in I had was to pay them so I'm here to give it to you for free because the Lord let me let me stumble on it today. So we want to talk about forgiveness. We want to talk about forgiveness. We want to talk about um, when you don't forgive the things that can hold your life up, the things that can block your blessing, the things that can affect your life when you don't forgive and we need to god bless you man of god we need to learn how to forgive we need to learn how to forgive because when we don't forgive it hold back so much from us so we need to learn the rule of engagement in forgiving because you will, you will be walking around, you will be walking and um, don't know that you're still holding up someone. You know, I encountered something um, a, few, a few months ago and um, I called a person, God bless you sir, I called a person and I said to them, can you forgive me? And they told me, no, they, a man of God, he said to me that he will forget, but he will not forgive. And I said, wow. So I want you to know that when you forgive people, it's, it's so much benefit that you get. This is the place I went. That for seven days, I paid them. Um, over seventeen hundred dollars for seven days. So I'm giving it away today for free. I'm giving it away today for free. I see it's paid. I did not know what I was coming to talk about. I wanted was to kill Amon today, but um, I want to talk about forgiveness so that we can move on. Amen. So we can move on. Forgiveness is a very powerful powerful ammunition than any believer of God can have is forgiveness it's a powerful powerful ammunition yes I know some of you don't like to hear that because you're holding on to the person and you're telling God to bless you you're telling God to give you this you're telling God to do this for you you will not have it until you release that person until you release that person or persons out of your life, you will never have what you want. You could pray until eternity. You will never have it. You will never, you will never ever get it. I'm not using my mouth to say this or to say that, but I'm telling you, you will never have it until you decide to forgive that person thank you sir don't you forgive what that person have done to you you need to learn how to forgive so i'm just introducing forgiveness right now and then we're going to try to do the phase of walking out from our forgiveness 
and learn how to forgive others in the name of Jesus. As Christian, as people of the Most High God, as people of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, we need to learn to forgive. And you, you, um, some people are suffering, and you're saying, why am I suffering? <coughs> because you're holding up on forgiveness. The devil don't want that, sorry. <coughs> you're holding up on forgiveness. And that's what's going on. So, you have to willing to forgive. Pardon me, I don't do this. I'm coughing. You have to learn how to forgive people. So I'm just going to get in the word and we talk about forgive right now. And now Jesus forbid um forbid hold <coughs> for us not to take hold. So Father, I just cover ourselves right now with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, Sakonda Bashaya. Leba Kurobo Sandra de Bosha in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The son of the living God. I come against coughing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every principality, powers, workers of darkness, spiritual wickedness. <coughs> in high and low places, I come against you right now. And I cut you asunder in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus, the blood that never loses its power in the name of Jesus. We saturate our own, we saturate our base, we saturate our body, soul, spirit, and mind with the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the earway right now, over the atmosphere right now. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name which is above all name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, we plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus and the unquenchable fire of God to be around us right now. <coughs> In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. We glorify his name. We honor him. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, when I finish, I'm going to do the same blessing that they give me when I leave there. When I leave their camp, the same blessing that they pronounce on me, I'm going to pronounce the same blessing on you. Here is my name right here, Dawn. In the name of Jesus. This, is, this has been hidden for so long. And it has to be a reason why the Lord have me find it so I could share it with you all. It has to be a reason why he did that. God is mysterious. And this is from 2010. So I have two. I think I have two people or maybe more than two. So I will just go on and continue to do what does say the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to hurry up and get off because I don't know if any of my Facebook friends will be on later. And I don't like to cut in on people. I like to give them their platform, even though everyone have their different audience. I still don't like to do that. It's called protocol. Yeah, you know, it's called not running just with each other. It's called um, doing your own thing as unto the Lord. That it called that we have to work together. <clears throat> Amen. So I will just go in and just dig. I'm not going to be with you long today. In the name of Jesus. It is cold. I'm loving the weather. The cold weather. I'm loving the weather. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. So I'm just going to dig in right now and ask the Lord to cover us again with the blood of Jesus. And the fire of the Holy Ghost. And a lot of you know that <clears throat> forgive, when, you, when you're holding forgi unforgiveness, it's like murder in the heart. You're holding murder in your heart. You have to learn how to forgive. 
You have to learn the heart of forgiveness. It is very, very important that you forgive people because when you don't forgive, it block your access. It block your access to the miracle power of God. It block your access. Don't care how you see someone behaving out there, going on, and they're, if they are suffering with unforgiveness, if they are suffering with unforgiveness, it's a bad thing because it's holding up your blessing. It's blocking you from what God wants to give to you. So I'm telling you today, after to this day or tomorrow, when you go and see your people in church or see them outside, you need to say hi or you need to take up the phone and call them. <clears throat> I don't like texts. Take up the phone and call them and um, let them know you forgive them. Turn on the ear for me. Let you know that they, you forgive them. You know, that like you're not holding them because you don't know who you might be holding up. <clears throat> you don't know who you might be holding up. So do not let unforgiveness block your access to the kingdom miracle. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So um, I'm going to read Matthew 5. Matthew 5 from 20, um, 21 um, to 24, or that, or from 21 to 24, <clears throat> or to 26. And it read, murder begins in the heart. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whosoever murder will be in danger, danger of judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is, is hangry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. <clears throat> and whosoever say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever say, you fool, shall be in danger of hell, of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you <clears throat> leave your gift there at the altar before the altar and go your way first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your your gift you hear what the bible said come and reconcile with your brother and offer your gift that is Matthew 5, 23 to 24, but I read from 21. Matthew chapter 5, 21 to 24. The Lord is telling you that you need to forgive. You need to forgive. Let's go to, go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15. And let us see what it says. And then let's just dig in. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Hallelujah. 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. <clears throat> but, but if you do not forgive men their trespass, Neither there will be will your father forgive your trespasses. A lot of us do not want us to forgive. And in the name of God, I'm asking you to put your Bible down. Put your preaching engagement down. Put everything that you are you are doing and try to forgive your brother. Try to forgive your brother. Try to forgive your sister. Try to forgive your neighbor. Try to give, forgive that church member that annoy you. Try to, for, to give that pastor who annoy you, who step on your neck. Try to forgive people. Because if you don't forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you in the name of Jesus. There is so much people that do me wrong. And I do a lot of wrong to people too. I'm not going to hear said I, I am... I am so holier than thou. No, I'm not here to say that. But there's a lot of things that have done wrong to me. And I have to walk away and, and said, I forgive you. 
So I went and spent over seventeen hundred dollars just to sit, and then they want me to teach them basically because I, I was holding hunger, I was holding grudge, and um, a lot of us blessing are held up because we are not we are not forgiving people. You see, this is not a message that some of you want to hear, so I don't expect you to stay. But the few that stay will understand. Hallelujah. You have to forgive. You have to forgive someone that the Father God will forgive your sin. Remember Peter said, then came to, Peter came to Jesus and asked, How many times shall I forgive my brother when he sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times. But 70 times 7, 7, not 70 times, but 70, 77 times, 77 times. And I know that I'm I past that limit with how I forgive people. So you have to forgive. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle an account with his servant. <clears throat> As he began the settlement, a man who owed him. 10,000 talent was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the, mas the pay, the master harder and said, He and his wife and his children and all that he had is to repay his debt. In Matthew 18, 25, 20, um, 21, 25. And when you stand praying, when you stand praying, <laughs> when you stand praying, and if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them before you engage in prayer. Forgive the people that you are holding a grudge at. Forgive them when you stand in to pray. And if somebody has done you something wrong, you need to forgive them before you start praying. Because you are condemning your own self and don't know that you are condemning yourself. Because you are holding someone in your heart when you when you don't want to forgive them but the first person that you need to forgive is yourself if the first person you need to forgive is yourself ask for forgiveness for yourself i'm working on myself asking god to forgive me thank you man of god i'm asking god to forgive me because i'm holding on forgiveness so every day i ask the lord every day i ask the lord Lord, please forgive me. Ever, whatever that I have done to anyone, whatever I have done to anyone, I'm asking you to release it. Let it be released from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be released from me in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the first part we have to try to do is to forgive ourselves. When we don't forgive ourselves, we are holding up the blessing of God. We are holding up the blessing of God. Many times I don't want to forgive the people that hurt me, but I realize that I'm hurting my own self. I realize that I'm hurting my own self. I realize that I'm causing a curse on myself. And I don't want any curse on myself, so I have to forgive. So I was, I was coming to talk about killing my Haman today, not knowing that the Lord has something totally, totally different. Totally, totally different that he wants to talk to me about. And I realized that when I found this, uh, when I went here 2010, Restoring Foundation. I went to Restoring Foundation and I, pay, I paid them. See, paid. I paid them. I paid them $1,750 for seven days. And I just found it. I just found it in my stuff, in my ministry page. For seven, seven days, I paid them $1,710. I paid them $1,710. Because I was holding unforgiveness. And I want, I want to release unforgiveness. 
What you have to do, Saint, you have to, you have to forgive people. You have to learn how to forgive. Because when you forgive, the whole portal of heaven will open up for you. You might think you are blessing, you're, you're, you are being blessed right now. No, you're not. Because there is someone that you're holding in your heart and you need to let them go. You need to let them go in the name of Jesus. You need to let them go in the name of Jesus. The first person you need to forgive, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Most people have a lack of forgiveness towards themselves. I am one person that have that lack of forgiveness towards myself. But I'm learning how to forgive myself. I am learning how to forgive myself. I forgive people faster than how I would forgive myself. But you have to learn to forgive yourself first. And if you are a believer, if you are a believer and have not already cleansed your conscience, that have already not cleansed your conscience, you might, you might serve in the living God, but your, your heart is not clean. Your heart is not clean You're, because you are not cleansed. You, are, you need to cleanse yourself. Everything should be dead and buried, forgotten. Put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Throw it away. Put it in the sea of forgetfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that God can forgive you. That you, God can forgive you. The Bible says we have confidence towards God. In 1 John 3, 2. But obviously we cannot continue in our sin and live to, uh, live to expect forgiveness. We cannot. We have to free ourselves. We have to free ourselves from this ongoing battle that we are facing. Because rebellion is a sin. And when you sin, you're sinning against God. When you're holding me and not, not forgiving me, or not forgiving your brother, you're sinning against God. You're sinning against God. And we cannot continue like that, saints. We need to walk in the light. We don't want to walk in darkness and walking in light at the same time. We need to walk in light. We need to walk in the light of the world. But when we are not getting blessed, we start blaming God. That God is doing this and God is doing that. No. God is not doing nothing to you. You are the one that's doing it to yourself. You are the one that is doing it to yourself. <clears throat> and you think you are being blessed. No, you're not. You don't see the blessing of God yet until you learn how to forgive. When you learn to forgive, don't blame God that this business venture don't come. This project is not coming through. No, go and check yourself and see how many people you're holding for unforgiveness on and when you try to let them go God will God will continue to bless you the second person that we have to forgive if we have bitterness in our heart if we have bitterness in our heart God himself know that we have bitterness in our heart so we need to check ourselves to see what bitterness that we have in our heart because there are many people that blame God because I am one of them. I am one of them. I am one of them. I was blaming God when my son was killed. I was blaming God when my son was killed. I was blaming God when my son was killed. But it was me. It wasn't God. It was me. What were you doing? What were you doing to cause that for his blood to shed? And what I had was to do... To rid myself from my bitterness, what I had was to do, I had was to go and forgive the boys, his friends that kill him. And when I go, people say, you, um, this woman is crazy. You know, she, she, you can you imagine you hear your son choking on his own blood um, on the phone, choking on his own blood, call you with a gunshot in his head, choking on his blood, and... Um, you having a having dinner with your with your mom. You having dinner with your mom at a restaurant, and um, you getting a phone call from from you don't know because it doesn't sound like your child. 
but something is wrong. You know definitely that something is wrong. You know, I pray that none of you lost your children to gun violence. I pray that none of you lost your children to untimely death. I pray blood covering over you and your life and the life of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will not have to bury your child. I pray that you will not have to bury any of your loved one in the mighty name of Jesus, especially your children. Think about your son, kill. Think about your, 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 your son off your child to school. Your child is away in college. And he's coming back home <clears throat> two days before Christmas. He's coming back home two days before Christmas um, to see you. And he's bringing his friend with, with him. And the friend staying by his place. And you expect them um, to be home with you for Christmas. Think about you, uh, your child is out of state going to college. And you're looking for them to come home for Christmas. And you talk to them about, say, about 3 o'clock. You spoke with them. And they're telling you they're about to go to the, um, the bus station. That time the, the gray on was um, popular. You're going to the bus station because um, you, they, you know, they want to take a cruise around and see the place. And you're waiting, looking at your watch or your clock or your phone, waiting to pick your child up from the bus station. And the next thing you got a phone call, why are you having your meal? That is why I don't like to go to restaurants. But all those fears shall be broken in the name of Jesus. It shall be broken off my life, my body, in the mighty name of Jesus. And you sitting at a nice restaurant, having your meal, and you saying to your mom, something is not right. Something is not right. I just, I just feel as if something is wrong. And that's all you can say to your mother. And then you turn to your mom and you said to her, I think Duane is dead. And your mother is going to say to you, um, you need to stop talking like that because you're talking crazy. And you are telling your, your, your parents, your mom, your biological mom, that's supposed to know when something is wrong with your child. And you are telling, telling her that something is wrong. And they are telling you, no, anything is not wrong. And while you're sitting there having a nice meal at a nice restaurant, someone call you. And when you get that phone call, the person is um, choking on their blood, talking to you, choking on their own blood. How would you feel? And in your heart, in your mind, you know that that call is strange because it's coming from your child phone. It's coming from your child phone. And those things are very strange. These are the things I don't get to talk into a church. So I thank God I can talk on a platform and let thousands of people may go viral in the name of Jesus. That they will hear about losing a loved one and walking in um, forgiveness. Do not walk in unforgiveness. And you are there. And you heard this phone call and the person is choking on their blood. And you know that you know that that someone is attached to your umbilical cord. That person is attached to your umbilical cord. And they are choking on their blood. And you sit there and someone is telling you no. And then you, there is another phone call came in. They took the last breath. You're not going to see that person again until eternity if you live your life right. That is when you're going to see that person. And all of a sudden you're getting a phone call. Um, someone is looking for you. The police is looking for you. The police is looking for you. In 5-10 minutes, someone is calling you because it's good to have an emergency number. The police, if you love to change your number, it's good to have an emergency number. 
But think about someone is calling you, looking for you because they need to they need to get in touch with you. Saints, saints, that is not an easy phone call. That is not an easy phone call. And you're going to turn to the person and said, you need to tell this one because I already know that he's dead. That's not an easy phone call. That is not an easy phone call for you to receive that your loved one has been just murdered. Two life has been lost. Someone has just been killed by a gunshot to their head. And you have to go to look and to see your son, to see your son's friend laying there dead. And you're walking with that, the, the, shock of, the shock of you losing a child, the, sh the shock of you losing someone, and you just sat there and don't know what to say. And I remember saying to them, um, saying to the police, you just need to take the body, you know, because I, I, I didn't know what to do. So think about you losing a loved one, and you still have that pain walking in that pain and don't know how to forgive the person don't know how to forgive the person and you're walking with that pain and then you have to bury the person you have to bury your child not a person you have to look at him in the casket with his head totally off and you have to bury him and looking there at him in the casket and after you bury that person, you want to kill the person that killed your loved one, especially a child. You want to kill that person that killed your loved one. And you just, you're walking in days for days. Are uh, you, you high. The, do the doctor keep giving you drugs to calm your nerves. And you're high and all you need in your hand is a gun. All you need in your hand is something. I'm not coming from right here. I am not coming from yesterday. I'm talking to you by experience. I am talking to you by experience. So if I sound that I'm venting, I ask God to have mercy on me. But I'm talking to you about forgiveness. I'm talking to you about forgiveness. And you are dear and you bury your son. After you try to kill, the, kill them, but you cannot kill them. Then you finally found them by the Spirit of the Lord, by the realm of the Spirit. You found the person that killed your loved one. And to the, the police tried to hold you and saying that you're clairvoyant. I'm not clairvoyant. I hear from God. I'm not clairvoyant. I'm a seer and I hear from God. But think about you have to sit there and the police is holding you. Because they want to know, they don't understand the realm of the spirit. And they are, they, are, they, are, they are holding you that you have to know something. How could she know all this? No, by the divine revelation of God. By the divine revelation of God, you can know anything you want to know. By his divine revelation. You can know anything and everything you want to know. If you keep live a holy life, if you all, all unforgiveness, you're not going to hear everything. You're going to hear something, but you're not going to hear everything. And you know what I did? I choose to forgive. I'm running ahead of myself here. But what I did, I choose to forgive them. I choose to forgive them. And how I could heal myself, I was walking around a battered person, spending money here and there, just spending, walking around a battered person until I decided to let these people go so I could live. I was dying inside. You're talking about my child, somebody I gave birth to. You're talking about my son, like my only son. You're talking about... And I have to watch him in the casket and I have to turn around and to forgive the people that kill him. That is heavy, saints. That is very heavy. That is very heavy. When I went to the station, to the prison, they called me crazy. But I'm crazy for Jesus. How can she go to, to forgive these people? 
when they kill her son. How can she do that? I said to them, I said to the police officer, in order for me to live, God bless you, sir. I said, in order for me to live, I have to forgive them. And a lot of us here need to learn how to walk in forgiveness. And the day that I forgive, I went to him, the person, the four boys, and I want to know why did you kill Dwayne? Why did you kill my son? And they tell me they don't know why they killed my son. And over the years, I've been walking around as a bruised person. Walking around as a bruised person. And that day, when I forgive them, I start living and could go and win, win soul for Jesus. I'm not going to tell you that I, I totally forgive them at that, that time and didn't remember. I remember. And sometimes I get very angry. Sometimes I get very angry and I was blaming God. I was blaming God. Why did you have this to happen to me? Why did you have this to happen to me? Why couldn't you have someone else get killed? Why could not the other people, children got killed? Why it would it have to be my son who got killed? And I walk in forgiveness and I forgive them. So I'm asking you that you need to choose to forgive. Forgive those that is closest to you. Forgive the people them that is very close to you. Forgive the people them that you know that hurt you and are very close to you. I want you to forgive them in the name of Jesus so you can live. You need to forgive them. You need to forgive them. Don't have any resentment against them. Don't have any resentment against them. Rid yourself of the resentment. Rid yourself in the, for the resentment. Especially if you have any resentment towards your husband, you have any resentment towards your wife, you have any resentment towards your children, you have any resentment towards your brother, your, 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 your biological brother, your spiritual brother and sister, don't let it build up in your heart. Forgive them. Forgive them. Any family situation that you're having, forgive them. I know it's very hard. But you have to learn how to forgive. Because unforgiveness is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Don't go to for any revenge for anyone. Don't get angry with God. Know that for unforgiveness is sin. It is sin. And what you have to do. When you're walking through your unforgiveness. This is what they give me at RTF. This is what this is what they give me at RTF, the Restoring Foundation uh, Ministry. This is what they give me there, and what they asked me, they said to me the doors. They told me that I, I'd open all these doors. I don't know if anyone can see. They told me, but I'm going to read it off to you. But you can see my name right there, Dawn. Right there. They, what they told me that if um, generational, generational, generational um, open door, that I have open door to soul ties, and I need, they need to pronounce a generation blessing upon me. So I'm running ahead of myself a little bit here. So what they said to me, what they this is what they said to me this is what they give to me and what they told me and my name is on it what they said to me celebration of our cross freedom at the cross it said you have to get freedom at the cross they told me that i was having ungodly belief they said I was having ungodly belief. See? Right there it says dawn. I don't know if you can see it. And I said to them, I don't belong to God. I'm always, I'll always be on the outside. They told me that God say, I do belong to God. And I'm one of his chosen children. I belong in the inner court. 
I will trust and walk in this truth no matter what the circumstances is. I will walk in the truth no matter what the circumstances. I will walk in that truth. He said, I will walk in the truth no matter what the circumstances is. I will walk in this truth. I'm going to go to Isaiah 35, 4. I'm going to go to Isaiah 35, verse 4. I'm going to go to Isaiah 35, verse 4. Glory to God. I'm not teaching it, itchy ears. Glory to God. God bless you, sir. I'm going to go to Isaiah 35, verse 4. Isaiah 35, verse 4. Encourage those who are afraid. Tell them be strong. Fear not, for your God is coming to destroy your enemy. He is coming to save you. See? Um, I don't know why did they give me that scripture, but it don't line up with, it don't line up with forgiveness. God bless you. It doesn't line up with it. But it says, um, I, your belief, you learn, you must learn to forgive people. You will never be able to receive love if you don't know how to forgive. If you don't know how to forgive, you will not be able to receive love. Because God is love. I will give you love. And you will receive love. Because God loves you. God loves me. God is love. Hallelujah, saints. God is love. This is what, what RFT gave to me. God is love. We cannot, we cannot be a child of God. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and we're walking in unforgiveness. No, we need to walk in forgiveness. You need to forgive people. You need to forgive people. And no, you are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are unique and wonderfully made by God. You are not a mistake. Don't think you are a mistake. We need to learn how to forgive people. And that's what we are lacking. When you don't forgive people, sickness and disease come in your body. Sickness and disease enter your body because you leave a gate open because you're holding someone in your heart. You're not letting go forgiveness. You're not letting go forgiveness. You see, they didn't even give me a scripture. You're not letting go for forgiveness. You're holding unforgiveness in your heart. You are, look up, you are holding on forgiveness in your heart. You have to let it go. You have to let it go. You have to let it go. You have to go and forgive the person that offend you. That the Heavenly Father will forgive you. You have to go and forgive them. You have to let them know I forgive you. People have a lot out there for me. So much money. So much wealth is holding up out there for me. So much judgment from the court of law that people are supposed to pay me my money and they are not giving it to me, but I forgive them because they want to use the Bible and you that you settle your, your score together before you go to the court. And even when you settle it with them, they are not, they're, they're still not going to do it. So it's very important that you forgive. Forgive men that sin against you. Forgive men that sin against you. Forgive men that sin against you. In the name of Jesus. Forgive men that sin against you. You need to forgive them. Don't blame God when things is not working right for you. Don't blame God that things is not working right for you. And don't go and revenge anyone. Don't go and take any like this. Don't go and, go and take any revenge and anyone because you're walking in unforgiveness don't do that don't do that learn how to forgive learn how to forgive don't be shameful just renounce 
renounce and break every agreement that and lie that the devil has ever told you that you should not forgive this person receive the truth from God know that you are a child of the king know that you are a child of the king know that you are blessed receive the truth from God know that you are blessed know that you are a blessed because what unforgiveness does unforgiveness rob you unforgiveness rob you from your blessing and forgive can you find Luke 17 3 for me and forgiveness rob you of your blessing that's what it does it rob you from your blessing it rob you from your blessing and I went and I paid $1,700 for seven days and they wasn't teaching me anything they wasn't teaching me nothing but you know we love to go to the we know love to go to the 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 name brand we love to go to the name brand we love to go to the name brand we love to go to the name brand and know that you can get something from someone who is organic like me someone who is not writing a sermon someone is not here telling you um you need to sow a seed right now as in, you need to sow right now in the name of jesus you know, I'm not going to use God, prostitute God, but if you would like to sow in my ministry, I would appreciate it. My pastor, you need to sow. You need to sow in my ministry, my pastor, you need to sow. You need to sow, sir. You need to sow. Hallelujah. You might see me tomorrow if you sow, if you know what I mean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you know I'm far away. Hallelujah. Yes, saint. We have to learn how to forgive. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. We have to learn how to forgive in the name of Jesus. Don't, don't let unforgiveness hold you down. Don't let unforgiveness hold you down. I'm, I am not a pro at this, so please bear with me. Bear, bear with me. I'm giving you the undiluted word of God. I'm giving you, giving it to you undiluted. Matthew, uh, Luke seventeen three, Luke, eh? Luke seventeen three and ten. Hallelujah! Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Learn how to forgive. We need to learn how to forgive ourselves because our heavenly Father will not forgive you. You need to learn how to forgive. Don't do don't do lip service. Say, oh, I forgive him. I forgive her. She walk out on me. I forgive him. I forgive her. It's all good. No, you have to you have to learn how to forgive. You have to know, learn how to forgive. And forgive us. And forgiveness rob us. And forgiveness rob us. Somebody write Luke 17, verse 3 and 10. Luke 17, verse 3 and 10. Luke 17, verse 3 and 10. Luke 17, verse 3 to 10. Luke 17 says, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times a day, and seven, seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And thou shalt forgive them, give him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase, increase our faith. And the Lord said, If he had faith as a grain of mustard seed, he might say unto the sycamore tree, Be thou be plucked up and cast, be thou be plucked up and cast into this the, uh, into this root. Be thou be plucked up by the root, and thou be planted into the sea, and he should obey you. He should, he should, he should obey you. I don't know if I'm reading the right 
scripture. 17.3.10, yes I am. And he should, you should obey him. And, and if you have, a, if, if, if he had faith as a grain of mustard seed, he might say to the mount, the sycamore tree, be removed and thou pluck at the root and plant it in the sea and it should be obey you. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding, feeding cattle that will say unto him, by and by when he come from the field, go and sit down to meet. Jesus is telling you that when you're going through temptation and trial, you see this big ministry, you need to read for yourself. You need to read for yourself. I'm not showing any shade at anyone, but all these big people that was there, articulate people that was there, and what they did. They just jacked something up and give it to me for $1,700. And you pay it and you said to God be the glory and you thank them and you leave. And you don't read it for yourself. You need to read for yourself. You need to read to show yourself a proof. You need to read for yourself. So I'm here to tell you that you need to forgive. Whoever is hurting you right now, you need to forgive. Forgive them. We must stop bringing up the offense of the offender. Stop bringing up the offense of the offender and tell them to forgive because first corinthians 13 4 and 3 said love is patient love is kind love is not jealous love does not brag love is not arrogant love does not un act unamicably love does not seek its own it is not provoke love does not take account of wrong love does not take account of wrong so if you have really forgiven someone it is covered in love it is covered in your love if you forgive someone it's covered in love it's covered in love so you have to learn how to forgive you have to learn how to forgive you have to learn how to forgive somebody See what they give me for $1,700 for seven days? You have to learn how to forgive. It is okay to forgive. If it, it's okay to forgive. Even when someone abandoned you, it is okay to forgive them. Even when someone of unbelief, it's, it's okay to forgive them. Even when someone is rejected or reject you, it is okay to forgive them. Even when you're living like an orphan, it's okay to forgive them. Even when you're living in grief, it's okay to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive someone. Learn how to forgive. Say lies. Don't believe the lie of the devil that you're going to hold this person up. Because you never know. You never know when they are not with you anymore. So learn to forgive them. Learn how to forgive them. You are, you are the sh in sh God's sheep. I am a sheep. Walking by side by side. Kneeling at his feet. Learn to forgive. Because when you don't forgive. You start having infirmity and disease in your body. You start having infirmity. You start having disease. Ravishing your body. Because sickness comes from, from unforgiveness. Some sickness comes from, from unforgiveness. So you have to know how to forgive people. Learn how to forgive. Because there is a disease that's called unforgiveness. There is a disease that called unforgiveness. When you ask some Christian, how do you feel about your parents? How do you feel about this person? How do you feel? And they just start telling you. They just start talking. I can tell you so much. 
I can tell you so much about unforgiveness. But you have to learn how to forgive someone. You have to learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive because it's, it's, it's killing you all. It's killing off people. Forgive them. Forgive them. Don't care what they do. If they even walk out on you, forgive them. I know it's very challenging. It's a very challenging for you to forgive somebody. When you're investing something, when you're investing something and you have to walk away, sometimes you have to walk away for your sanity. You have to walk away for your mind. You have to a walk away. Remember Israel's favorite son was Joseph. That's Israel's favorite son was Joseph. And you cannot blame Joseph for his misfortune. You cannot. Jacob is father. You cannot blame him for his misfortune. He was provoked. He was abused. He was lied on. I have been provoked. I have been abused. I have been lied on. You think I don't forgive the people that lie against me? You think I don't forgive the people that provoke me? You think I don't forgive the people that abuse me? I forgive them. So you hear me talking about it. I'm telling you about it. But I forgive them. And you have to learn how to forgive. You have to learn how to forgive. Forgiveness is a, is a cruel thing. It's bitter. Forgiveness and unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will take you to your grave. Unforgiveness will take you to a hurly grave. You don't want to go to a hurly grave. So you forgive people. I pray that person is watching me. I ask him to forgive me in April, in May. And he said, no, I will not forgive you. I forget, but I will never forgive you. I said to him, okay, you can go and kill yourself. Because if you want to hold me, then I am, I am 75,000 miles away from you. And you want to walk in unforgiveness and hold yourself bound because you've been rejected and you want to hold yourself bound you can go ahead so I'm here to tell you to forgive I'm here to tell you to forgive Genesis 37 Genesis 37 verse 3 to 4 now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of old age. Also he made him a tunic of many color. But when his brothers saw that the father loved him more than all his brother, they hated him. They hated him and they could not speak peaceably to him. God bless you. They hated him. They could, not they could not speak peaceable to Joseph. Because they hated Joseph. Jo they hated Joseph. They couldn't speak, speak peaceable towards Joseph. Because they hate Joseph. Jo what, what happened? It made matters worse. Joseph's brother already hated him. And it made matters worse when the father brought make this beautiful coat you know for, for for joseph and to make it even even harder joseph was a dreamer joseph was a dreamer joseph was a dreamer in prominence and in authority sometimes you don't know why your family hates you you don't know why people might hate you because you are a dreamer you can prophesy. You know something that they don't know. And all they have to do is ask. All they have to do is ask you. But they're not doing that. So Joseph's brother already hated him. And it just made matter worse when he dreamed two strange dreams. Both predicting his rise to a prominence and authority. Indicating that he would rule over his family. That, that was more than his brother could take. 
As we read, they hated him all even worse. They start hating him in verse 5, in verse 8. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hate him even more for of his dream and for his words. Can you imagine? Someone just hates you because you have a dream. Someone just hates you because you have a you, you have a rhema word. So not more, more than once, more than twice, ten and ten, more the ten of brother must have discussed how great it would be to get rid of Joseph. You have somebody in your core group right now. You have someone in your family. You have someone around you that want to get rid of you because of where they see God is taking you. So I want to tell you today, you need to forgive them because if you continue to read about Joseph's life, Joseph did forgive them. When famine was hitting them, when there was nothing, they have to come to Joseph. Are you the next Joseph? Are you the next Deborah? Are you the next Joseph that they are going to come to for help? Are you going to help them when they come? Are you going to tell them no? I have painful memory just as, as Joseph did. You might have painful memory. But what we can only imagine what Joseph has have, have gone through. Can you imagine what you have gone through? But we have to learn how to forgive. We have to learn forgiveness. 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 And we don't know forgiveness. Hallelujah. We need to learn how to forgive. We need to learn how to forgive others. So our blessing will not be caged. By the net night catcher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have to learn how to forgive. So wherever you are holding, I'm speaking to you, to God be the glory. So that means you need to hear this. So if it's only mean that you stay here, woman of God, you need to hear this and you need to go give go and forgive your sister. Go and forgive your 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 Go and forgive your daughter. Go and forgive your children. Go and forgive your sisters. Go and, go and forgive them. Release them and let them go. And as soon as you release them and let them go, you, you start seeing how big your blessing is. You start seeing the big picture of what God has for you. I'm going to read. Get your Bible, woman of God. Get your Bible. Turn to Genesis 39. Verse 2 and 3. I know that the Lord is with you. And it read, the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Sometime, glory to God, sometime you just have to be at the right place at the right time because don't believe people don't know who you are. Don't believe people do not know who you are. Once you learn how to forgive them, don't believe they don't know who you are. Because sometimes their, their bunch will be dry. And just you step in that presence. Just you step in that proximity. They are blessed. The barn is water. The garden is water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you forgive them. That's a good thing. You forgive them. That's a good thing. That's a, that is a big blessing. So you're going to see how your garden start to spring forth in the name of Jesus. Just walk in, walk in forgiveness. Forgive them. Forgive them. No matter what. Forgive them. 
because look look at 23 the keeper of the prison did not took into anything that was under joseph authority because the lord was with joseph and whatever he did prosper whatever he did prosper whatever he did prosper whatever he did prosper so i'm telling you right now to to release whoever you're holding captive release whoever you're we are only owning captive right now whoever you're holding captive release them in the name of jesus release them in the name of jesus release them let them go let them go when you let them go you start dreaming dreams having vision see your life prosper see everything around you prosper your barn never run dry you always prosper people think yes i need some finance finance is good money is good to have but having the money and don't having the health what is that what is that you cannot spend the money you cannot enjoy your money release people let them go release them let them go so you shall prosper as your soul prosper and you are in good health release them and let them go release them and let them go in the name of jesus release them and let them go don't own any grudge don't hold any grudge on their ministry don't hold any grudge in their life don't hold any grudge don't hold any grudge release them trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path he will direct your path the lord will release your children the lord will release your family in the mighty name of jesus the lord will do a divine release in the name of jesus the lord will do a divine release in the name of jesus release them and let them go release them and let them go and he will do a divine release in your life in the name of jesus don't hold them captive set them free set them free in the name of jesus i know i'm not prophesying and i'm not preaching what you want to hear i might not say what you want to hear but i'm here to tell you release whoever you're holding in your heart release them let them go that they shall prosper and that your soul will prosper you will be in good health your bank account will be healthy your life will be healthy your body spirit soul and mind will be healthy release them let them go release them and let them go in the name of jesus release them and let them go so you can prosper i have to go down the line it will take a book a whole book for the people that i had was to release and to let them go because it's it's a very hard thing when someone abuse you spiritually abuse you physically it's very hard to release them and let them go but i'm here today to tell you to release them and let them go don't follow anyone that tell you no hold them no don't hold anyone in your heart release them and let them go because when you release them and let them go that's when your blessings start to manifest in the name of jesus if you are going to hold on to them if you are going to hold on to them you are holding yourself in captivity you are holding yourself in captivity you are holding yourself in captivity let them go release them and let them go release them and let them go release them and let them go 
So I'm just going to pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name which is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Leba Leba Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm asking you, oh God, to release your children from unforgiveness. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking you to teach them how to love. Teach them how to walk in unity. Teach them how to walk in forgiveness, O oh God. Lord, I'm asking you to cover them with your blood. I'm asking you to protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your divine blood run through their vein. Lord, I'm asking you, O oh God, to touch their heart right now. Wherever there is unforgiveness, I'm asking you to replace it with love. Wherever anything that is ungodly, I'm asking you to replace it with love. Save the divine of your will and your way with your children. Forgive them, O oh God. Forgive them, O oh God. Let them learn forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive them, O oh God, that their soul will be prosper. That they will be prosper in good health, O oh God. Lord, I'm asking you, O oh God, to release everyone that is under strong man right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every stronghold of the strong man will command you to break by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, Liba Kodi and Raboshaya, Reba Kurobo Sandarabai, Leba Kandaraboshai, Leba Setteraboshanda, in the name of Jesus. We command you to break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever been held captive from your children because they are walking in unforgiveness. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, to open the portal to bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let unforgiveness be broken out of their life in the name of Jesus. And you continue to bless them, God, as the apple of your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the heart be clean, O oh God. Let the mind be clean, O oh God. Let the body be clear, O oh God. Hold them, O oh God, in the other palm of your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. We break the spirit of unforgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. And let them walk in spirit of love, in spirit of unity, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, that you will get the glory. You will get the honor. And you will get the praise. We thank you, Abba Father. We give all glory to you. All honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to take a break. And I will come back later on in a few. About this unforgiveness thing that you all are walking in. You need to release that brother. Release that sister. Release that mother, release that father, release that pastor, release that apostle, release that evangelist, release that bishop, release that deacon, release them, let them go, release them, don't, don't hold it to their charge, don't hold it to their charge, release them and let them go so you can be free. So you can be set free. Release them and let them go. In the name of Jesus. 
that you, you will get all the glory, O oh God. You will get all the honor and you will get the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, so shall it be. God bless you all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless